What up, what up? This is Coach Leaves, and welcome to Wide Receiver Film Room, Episode 9. This episode is focusing on Tampa Bay Bucks wide receiver Chris Godwin. And Chris just went off against the LA Rams last week, finishing with 12 catches, 172 yards, and two touchdowns in a big time upset win. It was 55 to 40 over the Rams. Uh, and in my opinion, just, just one of the more per- impressive performances we've seen because of the array of different things that Chris did. He ran great routes from the outside. He ran really good routes in the slot, caught a bunch of screens and got more yards after the catch. I just thought it was a well-rounded game where he did a little bit of everything. Chris is a guy that has been highly regarded around this league for a long time. If you hear Mike Evans talk about him, Mike's been talking about him as if he's a future number one receiver uh, for the last two or three years, he's been saying that. And, and Chris is finally starting to prove that. And I expect to see a lot more of it because I really do think he's one of the more underrated receivers in the league and, and a really, really special talent. Uh, so without further ado, Wide Receiver Film Room, Episode 9, Chris Godwin. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, here we go. First play of the game. Here's Chris down bottom. Two tight end set, 12 personnel, him and Mike Evans in the game. Just going to use a little short motion here from Chris. And a lot of times what I think the Bucks are doing here. They're using this short motion to force the leverage of the corner. Once you, once you motion in this tight, the corner has to play with outside leverage because there's so much space to the sideline. you got to protect that and play with outside leverage. All right, so by doing this, Chris has the immediate advantage on this curl route. All right, so they use a little zip motion, a little short motion. Now Chris is running an 18-yard curl route, and you can see he's already got leverage on the cornerback, and now he has to finish his break point, finish coming back to the ball, and he's going to catch it. Not the greatest route by Chris. He actually slips to the top of this because his eyes came out of his break early. On an 18-yard curl route, what you want to do is use a tight break at the top, which is drop one, two, three. Drop on your inside foot, and then three hard, choppy steps get in and out of your break. Drop one, two, three. The key to this is that your pads are low, and the last thing out of your break is your eyes, right? You got to finish the work with your feet first. Keep your head down, finish the work with your feet first, then show your eyes. Don't show them too early, otherwise you're going to slip. And you can see his eyes are just peeking to the football before that last step is finished in his break point, and that's why he slips right there and, and almost costs him because Talib is right on his back, you know, smacking him as he's catching the ball. But good ball by Jameis, good enough route by Chris, uh, and, and it's enough to get to get the job done. All right, here's Chris, the number three guy in the bunch right here. Uh, they're going to use him in a, in a little back and forth motion to, to kind of. The, the reason they're doing this is to get an indicator on how the Rams want to play the bunch. So based on this safety, this nickel safety kind of running with Chris in this motion, it makes you think they're going to lock the bunch, meaning that the guy pressing the point is going to lock on Mike Evans. The outside cornerback is locked on the number one receiver, and this nickel safety running back and forth is locked on Chris Godwin. A lot of times you can banjo this where you can switch guys off or play some zone to it. Based on this, it looks like they're going to lock the bunch, which is exactly what they do. So they're playing straight man-to-man. Okay, Chris lets Mike Evans come underneath and clear everything out. You got a 10-yard speed up on the number one receiver, and now you're leaving the middle of the field to let Chris work on this short post, which is just your best open field crossover. And the nickel safety kind of overplays the outbreaking route. You can see he shuffles outside and gets out there just a little too much and overplays it. Really great concept by the Bucs. This is one we used to run at Rutgers. I know a lot of NFL teams run. Um, but really great job. All he's got to do now, once the bunch clears out, Chris has just got to get on this guy's toes, attack him, and he's got all this room to cross his face. Jameis puts it right on him, and he's going to fight and get right inside the five. Really big time play, good throw and catch, and, and just a great concept by the Bucks. Here's Chris, the number two receiver up top. They're just going to run him on a little slip screen. You see more and more of these these days, especially when you're expecting pressure. When you have heavy pressure situations, these plays work great, and it's just like stealing. Let all these 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 guys who are pressuring the quarterback run run by the line of scrimmage, and you're just going to flip it out to one of your athletes. And his goal right here, he wants to get inside the kickout block by the tight end here, so get inside that block and then work back out. And that's just a really good job by Chris. And he's going to do this two or three times in this game. Just got a great feel for how to run these screens. The key to this play is Jameis Winston getting the ball out as fast as possible. Catch it, get it out, just like you're turning a double play in baseball. Uh, if it takes you a while to get the ball out, the play is dead. Catch it, get it to your athlete's hands as fast as you can, and let him do the rest. All right, here we go. Three minutes left in the first quarter. Here's Chris in the slot right here, and he's just going to run a deep stick route, a deep 12-yard stick route, and slight miscommunication with him and Jameis. All right, generally on these stick routes, the, the receiver has to have a feel for, do I want to sit it right down versus zone, or if it's a man-to-man look, do I want to run out of this and stay on the move? I think that Jameis would expect him to run out of this a little more than he did. Chris was sitting it right down because he felt like he had the space. Uh, again, I'm not in the meeting room, so I don't really know what their rules are, but standard football would tell you he's got the option to either sit in the zone or work out with a little more tempo 
And, and obviously, Jameis was expecting him to work out a little bit more, and he's trying to sit it up. All right, here we go. Here's a, here's a little condensed bunch. They're going to motion the tight end to the other side. All right, they're going to roll this coverage to one high. Chris is in the is the point guy on the bunch, number two up top, and he's just going to run this little, like, dagger post. He's going to find the soft spot in the zone. All right, push vertical, and watch how he pushes vertical all the way to 10 yards. That's what gets the safety's hips to flip. Push vertical to about 8 to 10 yards, get the safety's hips to flip. He's got to defend the vertical, and then you can snap this into the middle of the field. Uh, the most impressive part about this play is just what he does after contact here. Watch Chris catch the ball and just pinball off two defenders, stay on his feet. He's going to pick up an extra 10, 12 yards and get to the two-yard line. Um, so really great play by Chris, just being tough after the catch, staying on his feet, and finishing with a violent purpose. Another thing I really feel like Chris does a great job of is just the way he finishes these runs. He's not looking to just catch the ball and get down or catch the ball and get out of bounds. He's looking to finish and get more after the catch. All right, empty formation here from the Bucks. The reason you like empty on the goal line is it forces the defense's hand. They can't disguise coverages. If they want to play man-to-man, -man, they got to show you they're playing man-to-man. -man. If they're going to play zone, they're going to give you indicators for that as well. Clear man-to-man -man look here. They're running uh, the traditional pirate concept up top, which I think every team in America runs. An in route by number one and number two, and a corner route by number three. All right, if it's zone coverage, a lot of times you're looking for the short in routes. If it's man coverage, oftentimes that corner route comes open. So you got man coverage here. The two in routes bring the underneath defenders towards the ball, and then you got Chris breaking back out towards the back pylon. Just do a good job pushing your depth. Don't give this route away with your body language. Don't give this route away with your eyes. I think a big thing that receivers tend to do on these corner routes in the red zone is they give away where they're breaking with their eyes. Uh, he doesn't do that here. He pushes his depth two yards deep in the end zone and then breaks the back pylon. You know, the the, the nickel safety's got inside leverage here, so, so it's pretty much a steal in here for, for Chris and Jameis. Push your depth, run to the back pylon. The ball's actually very, very late, but Chris makes a good contested catch anyway. The ball should be thrown much earlier off his break, and it'll be completely uncontested. Uh, Jameis is dealing with a little bit of pressure, and he takes a little too much time to get the ball out, but, but you know, ends up being early enough for Chris to jump up and make this play, and there's his first touchdown of the game and, and a good play by the Bucks. All right, here we go. Starting off in twins, Chris is going to motion across the field. They're, they're back in deep into the Rams' territory here. Okay, and another one of these little slip screens. And it's a great job here and an unbelievable job by Chris Godwin, like I talked about, finishing with a violent purpose. So there's less to this screen. I was talking about before how oftentimes you want to get inside the kickout block, get back out. I think right here, they see that it's man coverage, right? The reason they're using this motion is to, is to get information on, on how are the Rams going to play us. Are they going to bump all the linebackers over and bump the defense over? That would tell us that it's zone coverage. If they have someone run with Chris, where you can see Tlaib is running with Chris here, then you know it's man-to-man. -man. Not only does he run with him, but he runs with him, and he's he's 12 yards off the ball by the time the ball is snapped. I felt like, like the corner was a little bit lazy getting over to defend this. Uh, he's just taking his sweet time getting over there, thinking he has all the time in the world. He's a yard into the end zone when they snap the ball. So it's just like stealing. He's taking himself completely out of the play. And like I said, less to this screen than the other ones. Rather than trying to get in and get back out, Chris is just going to run with speed and say, I'm faster than you, I'm tougher than you, and I'm going to finish into the end zone. And he lowers his shoulder on Tlaib and just ruins his day. He completely smacks him and runs him over into the end zone. And you just love to see it from wide receivers who are known to be soft, known to be prima donnas. Like, forget that. The best receivers in the world are the toughest guys in the field. And I love seeing this from Chris. Just lowering his shoulder, finishing with a violent purpose, and get into the zone for a second touchdown of the game. Awesome stuff right here. Here we go. Here's Chris up top. Uh, another really good example of recognizing coverage from Jameis Winston. Take what the defense gives you. All right, they're going to try and disguise too high coverage. But you can see the two safeties. They're going to play a three-buzz look where this field safety towards God Godwin's side, he's going to buzz inside as like a kind of middle hole player trying to rob the quarterback of anything under the middle. All right, as soon as he sees this, he knows he's got one-on-one -on -one loose coverage up top. Where do you want to go? Go to your 10-yard speed out. All right, it's, it's stealing out there. Third inside speed cut. All right, watch Chris. One, two, snap it off on your third inside. The key on routes like this is to keep your pads low throughout, all right? You don't want to let your pads raise up. You don't want to shorten your stride. You want to maintain speed throughout this route and speed all the way through the cut and keep that same tempo, good, fast tempo, selling like you're running a go ball and then snap it off suddenly. 
Uh, that's what he does. No raise of pad level, doesn't shorten his stride. So therefore, there's no indicators for the corner to jump this. He's got to defend the vertical and he's got to respect that. By the time he sees that, that Godwin is breaking to the flat, Jameis Reddy has the ball out and it's stealing versus loose coverage. All right, similar concept here now. All right, you get another one high coverage. Looks like it's kind of like a matchup zone. You got a middle hole. You got a middle hole linebacker who's kind of spying the quarterback. But you got you got loose man-to-man -man principles by everybody else. Most guys are turning towards the, the receivers, not the quarterback, which tells you that, that it looks like it's it's loose man coverage up top. Uh, and just just no one defending the flat. You know, you've got all you got, you need Chris just to stick this vertical. You know, threaten the DB's leverage a little bit so he can't break on the flat right away. And then when he breaks out, you know, Winston knows that there's nobody there defending the flat. You can see Chris, he, he's got an outside leverage defender. So Chris just keeps stemming to the outside. He just keeps spraying his release to the outside, get to the outside, get to the outside. And then by the time he snaps it off, he he, he has regained leverage on this defender. I, sometimes you get in trouble if you just run straight right here by Godwin. You know, now you have to work across the defender's entire body and maybe he can jump that. But by continuing to spray this outside, he's already beat the, the defender outside at the top of his route. He's squared him up. He's got leverage. Now he's got to break away with speed. Jameis got to put the ball on him. And it's free yards again. All right, here's another screen to Godwin here. This one's a little different. The last two have been slip screens, right? Which is one step, catch the ball, get out. Okay, they happen much quicker. This one is a rocket screen, a tunnel screen, where Chris is going to take three full steps upfield. All right. Watch them. One, two, three, full steps upfield. You do that because you got to give your blockers time to come out and, and rally and make these blocks for you. If you just go right away, they're never going to get here in time. All right, but he takes these three full steps upfield. All right, that gives his receiver time to come out and block the flat defender. All right, you've got this, this other receiver motioning from the backside of the formation. He's going to use his, his speed to come out and get the next threat out there, the next perimeter threat. And just a really good job by these two skill players blocking it up. And really good feel here from Godwin. This is what we talked about. Get inside the kickout block and then work back out. And watch him work back out and slip behind both these blocks and use his blocks perfectly to get to the sideline, get away from the big nasty bodies in the middle, and then find the green grass to the sideline. Ends up being a good 10-yard play here on second down from the Bucks. Uh, really well blocked by the wideouts. Really well executed by Chris Godwin. Um, and of course, the timing was perfect by the quarterback and receiver as well. All these things need to happen for this play to go. All right, here we go. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Another bunch formation. This is actually a cluster set. You got the tight end up top by himself. Starting off in the cluster. You're going to motion Godwin out of it. It's now a two-by-two two set. All right, another 10-yard speed out here. Stealing versus loose coverage. All right, they're doing a great job taking what the defense gives them, not trying to do too much. The Rams are in a deep zone here. They're not really defending anything under, underneath, and, and it seemed like they struggled to do this all game. A game where they gave up 55 points to the Tampa Bay Bucks. They struggled to defend underneath the whole game. Um, and, and here's a good example of, of why. You know, you've got the corner to leave just, just running off the ball, defending the, the go ball. So all Chris has to do here is put his head down and run and snap it off. And he's got his outside foot up here at the top, so he's going to go fourth inside speed cut. Fourth inside speed cut. Watch his feet. And just keep your head down, keep your pads low. One, two, three, snap it off on your fourth inside. Again, no one to defend the flat. Corner's got to defend vertical. As long as you throw this ball on time, it's stealing. And... All right, another one of these kind of bender routes in the middle here by Godwin down bottom. Similar to that little dagger post in the middle of the zone that he caught earlier in the game in the red zone. Same thing here. Just, just, just a bender versus one high. You got to clear this linebacker, push your depth. But as soon as you clear the linebacker, you want to bend it into the soft spot of the zone. Again, they, they just the Rams are giving such easy indicators as to what the coverage is. The safeties roll down so early. They, they give their tell away so early. You know you've played a game where it's been all one high zone. Uh, and, and now you've threatened the Rams outside. You've completed a bunch of balls on the sideline. Okay, so now watch the flat defenders here. Look at how wide these flat defenders are getting now to combat that. Because you completed so many balls on the sideline, now the Rams have to overcompensate for that. They're buzzing the flat defenders out hard as hell to go defend the sideline. And now here's Chris just slipping in the middle. And now he's taking advantage of the void of the zone, which is now in the middle of the field. That's all we've got for wide receiver film room episode 9. Like I said, Chris Godwin just played incredibly. A well-rounded game by this kid. Again, 12 catches, 172 yards, two touchdowns. Big-time upset win against the NFC champs. Uh, just really encouraging stuff from Chris, and I hope to see more and more like this. I think he's a really great player and just will continue to improve as his career progresses. Um, but 
That's all we've got. As always, if you love this content, please, please, please share it with your friends. Post it on Instagram. Post it on Facebook. Post it on Twitter. You know, I, I feel like these wide receiver films are really special for the people who watch them, and, and we just want to continue to spread them to as many people as possible and, and get the name out there as much as we can. Um, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Sideline Hustle. That's the most direct place to get in touch with me, as well as, you know, all the daily content that we post every single week, every single day. Teach tapes, uh, some of the rants by me on, on Bean Talk and stuff like that. Anything you guys need Sideline Hustle-wise, you can find on Twitter and on Instagram, at Sideline Hustle. Hit me up anytime. Hit me in the DMs. Ask me questions, whatever you guys need. Till next time, this is Coach Leaves signing out. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.